Hey there everyone, I'm here with Karina Sell, who is a student of high res. How are you? Yeah, good, thank you. Um, so you're here for a number of different reasons. Obviously you've had uh, some success in property mm. um, and that's not been a one-off success. It didn't just happen. Now we talk about you uh, getting out of paid employment in four months, mm. but it wasn't really that short. No. Tell us about um, when you grew up, um, the circumstances, family, mm. where, Yes. Yeah, yeah, totally. Sure. Um, so I grew up, uh, my mum was a single mum on the pension. Um, my dad was someone I saw every other weekend, but not financially in the picture uh, for that environment. Um, I lost my mum when I was 15 and moved into government housing. And in that situation, um, I remember not I had uh, one of the specialists sit down with me and look at my budget and realising that I wasn't making enough money just to support my basic needs. I was getting myself to school. I once uh, missed a number of days at school because I was too embarrassed to ask anyone for money to catch the bus to school when I'd run out. Um, so yeah, I grew up without a lot of money, but through that time I also had a lot of passion and I knew one day things would change. I just thought I was going to win the lotto. <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting to know that actually uh, 80% of people when interviewed were asked in a poll how they would become rich and 80% of them said the lotto. So yeah. now you're the eldest of how yeah. many? Uh, full sister and uh, a half sister and half brother as well. So when you went, when you were 15 and you lost your mother, um, where did your sister go? Um, so me and my sister moved in with my dad for a year. Right. Okay. And at that moment in my life, that didn't work for me at all. So I moved out of there after uh, after 12 months, my sister stayed. Right, okay. And so since then, obviously, you went into the workforce like everyone else does, mm -hmm. did their J-O-B. Yeah. Um, what was that like for you? Because it got to a point where it wasn't quite right. Yeah, look, I went job after job. I was pretty much changing about every 12 months. Something never felt right. I was trying to climb the corporate ladder, hated that. Um, fell into a commission-only role, loved it, but over time got got worn out by that. And um, I just remember the anxiety of going, where's the next meal coming from? Where's the next dollar coming from? And just, you know, when you wake up in the morning and you've got to go to a job and it feels like the next minute you're falling back asleep and have to get up and you just repeat, 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 it gets really exhausting. Yeah, it's an interesting thing, you know, running, jogging a lot. Um, you know, morning you're jogging past cars of people that are just sitting there on their way to their job um, mm. and they just don't realize there's another avenue that they can follow so for you you obviously started to get educated you sat in a property event thought this is for me yeah absolutely and um well yeah i got involved in property education and made a, a number of steps i got into my first property mm -hmm. and um yeah, I... Now you didn't have a lot of money to get into that property. Oh, no, I did so, a <laughs> very low money down deal. So I had. Uh, tell us a little bit about it. I had $13,000 in savings. Yep. Um, I had $7,000 first home owner's grant that I was entitled to. Um, commission only up and down work, so I didn't have serviceability. So I basically said to the owner, you're asking too much for this property. I'll pay you too much. I just don't want to pay it for two years' time. Put a deposit down, renovated it, and um, yeah, by the time I went to settle, it was worth more. And so in the meantime, even if you didn't renovate it, which you did, yeah. um, if you didn't renovate it, it would have gone up in value as well? I was very lucky. I got in just as the market was climbing. It was practically a flat market the day I put the contract on. The day after, it was <laughs> shot Crazy. right up. And, and that doesn't happen by chance. I mean, there's research that happens in there. And we talk about a due diligence and yeah. making sure the area's right. And we didn't know the day it would happen. We didn't know it was that close around the corner. But um, yeah, it certainly, I knew that something was coming and yeah. I was lucky it came straight away. And so effectively, uh, you went through that process, you sold it, and how much roughly did you make? Um, yeah, $300,000. So you went from $13,000 plus some costs along the way of, of renovation, whatever, but basically $200,000, $250,000 profit mm -hmm. over what period of time? Um, that ended up being three years. Three years. Yeah. So it's not too bad. Like, you no, there's <laughs> an income sitting there on the side. $80,000 a year. <laughs> and so, okay, um, you are then moved states for, for work? Yeah, well, when it came time to settle on the property, um, I didn't have the financial background to support that and I needed to find a job that was going to pay that much. I knew uh, as I'd been in recruitment for a little while um, that Sydney pays a little bit higher and I just happened to land a job while living in Melbourne, landed a job in Sydney and moved just to settle on the house. Yep, great. Yeah. All right, so then um, obviously you join high res mm -hmm. uh, you look at what we do um, mm. and you take the first strategy really quickly and you get into a deal within the first couple of months. Yeah. So yeah. that deal is a house? 
Yep. Um, well, it started with being a house um, that had a number of rooms in it and knew that there was a way to rent out each door to make uh, a lot more income than you'd have if you had one tenant in there. Yep. And so it's where we talk about a HMO, making sure you set up the fire and safety. It's something mm. we, we teach and talk about constantly, that the fire and safety and the requirements of making sure people staying in your house are protected. Mm. So this one in particular is how many bedrooms when it started? Um, so this particular one was three bedrooms, two lounge rooms and an additional living space and had the granny flat too. Yep. So um, effectively you were paying um, how much a week? Uh, this one was twelve fifty. Yep. Um, yep. Twelve fifty per week. Yep. And um, yeah, we were renting rooms out for anywhere between three twenty over winter, three six uh, two yeah, three sixty over summer and sometimes four fifty if yep. a couple was. So there. this is a beachside suburb um, yep. in, in a you know a capital city. Um, so you've done that one. So that's that setup cost there basically paid itself back within eight or nine months. Yeah. Then after that was all profit. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It was an interesting one. It was a development site. We knew it was going to be uh, knocked down, so we have it forever. Also saw the income was really high on that. So. So you take this one. It's gaining you income. It's doing really well for you. And the owner or the agent contacts you. Um, it was around the time we picked this up. We started testing it. We. You know, we paid the deposit on it, we put the ads up and we were just flooded. We thought we'd get $300 a room. We were flooded with applicants and we went, this is interesting. We know the developer owns the one next door, which is also on the market. And you we took that one We put an offer up. on the one next door. <laughs> so you now take the next door place. So that starts at how many bedrooms? And uh, Three bed, two bar. Yep. So the previous one, we were able to create two extra rooms. This one, we were able to create an extra room on this one as well. And so you do an exempt development approval to be able to, well, exempt development is, does not require an approval. You put the mm -hmm. walls in and so you're getting $1,000 a week is what it's costing you. And again, you're pulling more cash flow out of that. Exactly. And so this one was only supposed to be for six months. Yep, this one and the previous one, both were six months. We saw some of the stuff the developer said. So with the education, we knew six months was, you know, they, they wouldn't have their DA in six months' time. Yep. Um, so we knew it would get a bit longer, but we we're really happy to get 16 months. So you got 16 months out of it. It basically earned you about $70,000. And at the end, you got your bond back. Got the bond back. Um, we're able to take most of the fire safety stuff with us onto the next property deal. Most of the furniture was recoverable and um, yeah, so there's very little that stays stuck in that deal yeah. when you move into the so next one. So you can one. always use it on the next one. Yeah. Um, if not, you know, obviously bond you put back in the bank. So, so that one turned out really well. That actually put you in a position to be able to leave work. Yeah, it was half my income replaced effectively because I was doing this with a money partner who yep. paid my setup fees. Mm -hmm. And I went, it doesn't make sense to sit in a job that I don't enjoy. I'm tired, I'm exhausted when I can create something just like that. Yep. And so Monday was your HMO day? Yep. For management? Yep. yep. For a while we did uh, every single Monday, I just put into uh, growing this and managing this. Yep. And in the granny flat, you actually put one of our other clients. Yeah, yeah. At, uh, we, we wanted an on-site manager um, and yeah, we actually put another high-res student uh, into the granny flat and he wanted to relocate to the area. He was able to live there for free and keep an eye on the two houses. That's um, pretty good. Okay, so you've done that. You've now settled on the first um, purchase, your own home. You've got money in the bank. Mm -hmm. um, but along the way, you're saying, I need some more no money down strategies. Yeah. And uh, you find this property. Yeah. So give us a, a, a breakdown of this, how many units it is and what, sure. what's the story. So I'd actually settled on and sold my first home, recovered, well, I was about to recover the profit, came across eight units all in one title in a little country town. Now, this one was particularly run down. Um, only three of the units were tenanted. There were things like holes in the roof in tenanted properties that the owner didn't have the cash to repair, um, and they'd just been neglected. All of the real estate agents in town refused to work with them because they'd seen no maintenance being done. They didn't want to put tenants in there. And the owner was stuck on an 8.9% fixed interest rate. So they were just bleeding $3,500 every month at a property that the rent wasn't even giving enough money for the maintenance, let alone enough to pay the loan. Mm. And so for me, I mean, fixed interest rates, I, I've only ever fixed interest rates twice and I lost both times. Mm. Interest rates being so low now, you've got to think, well, should I or should I not? Mm. Um, but when you look at the advantage of the bank, they always end up pretty square. So I, yeah. I 
choose not to fix. Um, okay, so this one here, you've actually done what we call a circle of life community. Yeah, so what this started with was a bunch of agents, uh, well, the agents traditionally were very small-minded in this town. And if you were a, a young female with some kids, you go in this block. If you're a young man, you went in this block. This one they decided was the indigenous block. And while a lot of tenants had come in and had been great tenants, we had one bad one that had come in. And then it continued this process where anyone who was a decent tenant moved out, anyone who was happy to live in that kind of environment moved in and the whole block became Which is why horrible. you basically only ended up with three out of the eight tenanted, you know. Yeah, so exactly. So that's before your time. Um, so you've gone in then, you've um, slowly renovated one at a time. Yep, did it from the inside. A um, bit of a debate on whether to renovate the outside or the inside first. I found when you renovate on the inside first, at least you're getting a cash return on the money you spent. Um, so did one at a time and was able to up the rent of what was tenanted from 160 to 240 or create 240 on the ones that weren't. So listen to this because this is a win-win situation. Someone's really struggling to pay their interest. Mm. You've come in and said, we'll pay the interest. Then, mm. you know, you're going to put some money towards renovating, which means inclus- increases the rent. So you're covering the interest plus you're getting some cash flow. So mm-hmm. this doesn't settle until um, August, so August yeah. in 2018. So we've still got some time to go for that. Mm-hmm. Um, just give us some rough figures on that. All right. So I've renovated five of them now. Yeah. Um, as soon as the next two tenants move in, um, that's increasing the cash flow to $89,000 per, sorry, the rent to $89,000 yep. per year. Yep. Um, of that, I've got to pay the mortgage from that. Um, so how much roughly is going to be left over out of the 89000 for you? Forty. So you've effectively got $40,000 cash flow for a property you don't own yet. Yeah. Um, you paid four eighty for it? Yep, yeah, paid four eighty for it. Um, look, units seem to sell at a 10% uh, yield there. So 90 grand rent, you'd suggest that it might value up at 900, yep. but to be conservative, even at 800, yep. I've only spent 100 grand on it. So you spent 100 grand, you've taken it from 480 to 800 conservatively. Um, mm-hmm. So effectively, you'll be able to get a loan outright and yep. show the banks that you've actually improved the property along the way. Exactly. Yeah. And that is without strata titling. If I do strata title the units individually, then you're talking about the vowel coming up quite a lot more significantly. And that's probably the next step after I settle. Okay, so great deal. Um, we worked on that together for a long time. So great to see that <laughs> it's coming off. Uh, deal four. Yeah, well, um, I was in a situation where I went, okay, I'm out of my job and I was living in a little unit. and Crappy going, little unit. <laughs> <laughs> an older unit. And I went, okay, well, I want to change my lifestyle. I want to pay less rent, but I also want to live somewhere nice. I'd Living in Sydney, I'd relocated. I'd done the Surrey Hills thing and been in the city and I just went, well, what's a really nice suburb that I can live? And in doing the research for the HMOs and looking at the next house, I'd seen some suburbs where sometimes the numbers uh, looked nice and I came across one that I just picked up straight away by being in the market. It was way under market rent and it was a penthouse by the water in Rose Bay, um, already furnished with beautiful furniture as well. And uh, that one was going for $1,000 a week. So you've set that up as a share house. You rent out two rooms. Yeah. You've got, though, if you stayed in one of the rooms that didn't have the ensuite, you'd be rent free. In the smallest room, yeah. um, I would be making $20 a week yeah. <laughs> being paid to live in my own house. Yep. Um, um, in but the instead, bigger room. you decided for comfort. You yeah, the and at the moment, I'm paying one ninety so per week. What would, you have to, what would you have to pay? So what could that room get in rent? Um, if I'm renting it out over the summertime, um, then you're looking at a five ninety. Uh, so so you're effectively got four hundred dollars cheaper to live in a in a room. Mm. Um, it's a thousand dollars, which you would normally not be able to pay a thousand dollars a week for most people. I'm not yeah. saying you you could, um, but you're effectively living in a thousand dollar property for one hundred ninety dollars a week. Yeah, with two flatmates. Yep, not and, too bad. Yeah, and you know, close to the water. Absolutely. Deal five. Yes, another JV. So, Um, Yeah, another JV money partner uh, came on board with this one and we went, okay, we're going to go down the short-term rental and Airbnb market. Um, So we found a unit and this was from the same agent that brought us the first two properties. So what happens is once uh, we we always go through the agent, I've got no interest in going to owners directly. Mm -hmm. Agents got access to a lot more. And when you're trained on the right things to say, um, you get into this situation where you know how to you know, how to present it, how to show the agent what the benefits are for them and the owner. Yep. So she now brings us deals all the time. Right. So we came across this one and went, you know what, it's not right for the HMO, but it's kind of ideal for Airbnb. Um, so we set it up on a three-year lease, a one by one by one. 
and uh, basically furnish that one and put that on Airbnb. And someone manages that for you? We've got a manager in place for that yeah. one. Yeah. And how's that going? Um, yeah, it's going well. Um, our HMOs, you know, looking at the money we make on the HMOs, we go, <laughs> it's well... It's a tough way to make money. <laughs> Short stay is great, but as there is a, it is a tough way. So that, there is some cash flow coming in that. So having not enough of that deal, six paint comes up. <laughs> yeah, this is probably my favourite deal yet. Um, this one we rent for seven ten a week. And um, look, when uh, fully tenanted, we're getting 1800 a week back in return for that. We pay the rent across uh, for that one. We pay for cleaners, gardeners, a couple of additional steps there we're paying the bills and then uh, at the end the rest of that goes into our pocket so you anticipated per room when you tested the market you tested it at how much well we tested it at 180 and nearly let the deal go yeah, right. <laughs> but continued the research through uh through i guess how you educate yep. and went you know what we're going to get at least 200 and we couldn't believe it when the applications were coming in at 300 300 dollars what you got so um so effectively this was like an eight month payoff for the costs up front or maybe even less I think a little bit less than yep. that so um, um which is good i mean we always aim at a you know 12 month cash on cash return yep um, again we can keep this for three years yep. um probably longer it had been a share house that had uh, gone horrible and the owner was close to the idea completely yep. and we were just able to say hang on we do things different and this is what we follow and the insurance is going to be valid and the fire safety is going to be there and they were just blown away by what a share house can be yeah and so you know this whole hmo market is is taking a step up from what it what it always has been which has mm. just been a really low end um, thing and and you've got professionals doctors going in there um doctor didn't end up moving in yeah, but right. we have had a lot of professionals applying for it um this particular one's the uh international market and we have a lovely setup where we've got an Irish couple, an English guy, a Sri Lankan guy, a girl from New Zealand and a guy from Ecuador <laughs> all sharing their house together. A, a worldwide <laughs> circle of life, isn't that amazing? And on top of that, they came to us asking if they can start a veggie patch in the backyard. Oh. These are people that have created oh. a home and a community. That's great. Okay, so you've got a few other things going underway. Yep, so I've got a, another block of units under due diligence, a um, couple of HMOs that are looking to open over the next month. Mm -hmm. Um, and just going, okay, the next step for me, I think, is to get involved in a development. I can renovate, I can set up other people's properties, and I'll continue to do that for the cash flow. But really, it's adding to my portfolio yep. and purpose building something. So you got a few messages that you'd like to say? Yeah, look, the big thing for me is just learning that you're not stuck wherever you're sitting. And it doesn't matter what circumstances you've been dealt with. If you don't have money, you can partner with someone that does. If you are um, you know, don't have time, you can partner with someone that does. If you don't have experience, there's so many different ways that you can move forward. And you, know, you can never invest yourself into a corner if you're willing to be creative. Um, the other thing I learned is it doesn't have to be perfect when you start. Yes, there's rules and regulations you absolutely have to follow. But if you mess up on your first deal, when you've gone and done the research for uh, there and you've got everything ready, I mean, the deals we messed up on, we've made plenty of mistakes in all of this, we've still made money. Yep, that's good. Um, so all of this obviously lends itself towards, you know, the what, what you can do for yourself first and mm. then um, what can you do for someone else. Mm. Now, um, what I love is that, you know, we talk about our circle of life concept and, um, you know, your block of eight there, mm. you've completely transformed that. Yeah, and I guess what I didn't go into is who's living in that. And you know, it uh, started with a, a grandma moving in. We had two single mums moving in. The grandma stayed at babysitting the kids for the single mum so they could go to the shops. We had a guy with a disability and he makes some quirky sounds. He looks a bit threatening if you don't know him. And he's now part of the community. They'll protect him. One of the worst things that can happen is you can put a bunch of people either with disability or one stereotype together and build a vulnerable community. This is a community that supports each other. We've got a lady that's escaped domestic violence. Her old partner doesn't come by anymore. Um, you know, she's got the support of the community around her. We've got a guy that just changes light bulbs for people and helps out in the community too. And it's just a mix of people. And I'm not saying they're always going to get along perfectly. It's a community. But it's certainly uh, created an environment where these people are safe and comfortable, which is the exact opposite of the reputation it had beforehand. So, so not only have you created something that we, we've always talked about, you've mm. actually done it in action, um, and you also um, inspire a lot of people, and I just yes. want you to know that. Um, so what's your move forward? What's your big plan? 
big plan moving forward um look is to continue on the journey that i'm on and step into areas i'm uncomfortable with so at the moment developing from scratch is something that i'm uncomfortable with and i love stepping out of my comfort zone but it's also a lot of giving back as well so i've personally created the goal to inspire uh, that many people out there that within three years time i can see that from my push or inspiration i've created ten thousand dollars uh, sorry ten million dollars of income of what other people have achieved that i can say you know what i've taken a part in that that's amazing so uh as you know high res is around smalls new big and you know the socialist capitalist is all about doing the best that you can by you know and then social capitalist about mixing a cat and a dog together and that's what we're about you know <laughs> saying that you can do things differently and that people will benefit from it as well so thanks for coming along thank you very much